You pack. I'll order. Right. Uh, I'll have a gin and tonic. Okay. Got it wrong night before last, though, at a Tupperware party. <laughs> I went with a plastic picnic. Yeah. Let's go and meet the contestants and we're going to play ball. <laughs> Excuse me. Did you order yet? No, I didn't. Did you get parked? You want to like music? Yeah. Something wrong with us? Excuse me. I look up. I'd like some service here, please. Can I have a pint and a gin and tonic? I'm not please? blind and I'm not deaf. You could have fooled me. What do you just want? <laughs> Can I have a pint, please, and a gin and tonic? Could I have some ice and lemon, please? No ice. <coughs> Nothing smaller. Excuse me. What do you want now? Uh, same again, please. Right. Uh, no, I think I'll have a pint of Hoffman's, please. A what? Hoffman's. There's no Hoffman's. Oh, oh well, then I'll have a bottle of stout. Please. Make up your mind, will you? I hear do it yourself. Finish that up, will you? Why do they all do that? And I told him, I said, well, the winner gets 200,000 francs, you know. He said, but why do the others do it? <laughs> More lemon. Uh, two forty. How much? Two sixty. Another tenner. <laughs> You fancy something to eat? Yeah. I'd say the best we get is a sandwich. Excuse me, do you have any sandwiches? Hey. Hey, they want a sandwich. Hello.
Tony, could you wipe this counter, please? I'll be back in a minute. <clears throat> Vodka and Coke, please. Of course, love. Excuse me, are we in any danger of getting another drink down here? You two have been nothing but trouble since you came in here. Get the hell out of here. There's a pub down the road for people like you. Evening. You're in fine form tonight. Could I have a pint of Guinness? And a large vodka. A pint and a large vodka. Excellent. Hmm. Now, hold on, I'll be back in a minute. You're a gentleman. Not tonight. Two cases. What are they? I have a great selection of labels. Hold on yourself. Go on. Right. I'll get the other one. Go on, hurry. Do you want that? I'm poisoned. Will we go? Yeah, let's. Better call an ambulance. We're back to Candles when they finish that in Lancaster. It's funny, you know, you're something like What you've just seen is, of course, an exaggeration. But very simply, there is a correct way and an incorrect way of doing everything. There were, of course, some very obvious mistakes by our bar staff. But how many of the smaller ones did you notice? Now, the purpose of the second half of this video is to demonstrate some useful hints and some of the better techniques in helping you provide a better service. The second part of this video 
will follow the same sequence as the first part, but will be approached in the professional way that these tasks should be addressed and carried out. As you'll have gathered, we're all actors, and we'll present the same situation, scene by scene, as it should be done. Remember the car park? Make sure your customer's first impression of your premises is welcoming, clean and tidy, without crates, barrels or empties marring the entrances and exits to the building. All product in its proper place, the storage area. No matter what your premises, big or small, make it attractive to all your customers, regular or passing. Hygiene and cleanliness start with you, the bar staff. Make sure you're clean, your hands are clean, and that your dress is neat, clean and tidy. It needn't be a fashion parade, but clean, neat dress does create the right impression. And also personal cleanliness indicates overall hygiene. After all, if you don't look clean, the customer may feel that your attention to hygiene and the preparation of food and drink may not be a priority. Ah, oh, this is a vast improvement on our first experience. It's clean, tidy, well kept, warm and generally inviting. Evening, sir. Hello. Now, watch this barman's approach to his customers. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Hi. What will it be? Well, I'll have a pint, please, and, um... Uh, gin and tonic. Ice and lemon, sir? Please. Nice place. Yeah, it's lovely. You been here before? Yeah, I think I was a couple of years ago. Cold outside, gentlemen. Yeah, yeah it's very, yeah. very... Warm in here, though. Thank you very much. Three pounds and five p, please. Thank you. Slauncher. Slauncher. Thank you. Thank you. These are simple points, but remember the basics. Clean presentation, clean counter, clean glasses, clean layout. Correct procedure in pouring all drinks. Do you know the right way to present all drinks, bottle, draft and spirits? Health and safety factors have given rise to a whole new range of alcohol-free beers, such as Calibre. Demand for alcohol-free beers has risen dramatically in recent years. And remember, it's not just the pouring of drinks, but how they are kept and stored. For example, 
The regular weekly cleaning of lines for all draft products is essential both in the presentation and taste of drinks, ensuring that bottled beers are always kept at the right serving temperature is easily remedied by having a cooler, shelf or cabinet, or in the case of draft beers, an under counter cooler close to the tap, or a cold room. To be sure of product quality and to achieve correct percentages, stock must be rotated correctly. It is best to use the FIFO system, that is, first in, first out. In this way, proper stock results are achieved. Once attention is paid to detail, the job in hand will be much easier. And remember, the impression given on the first order could decide whether they stay for a second or go elsewhere. Remember also that the general presentation includes many factors in satisfying customer comfort and ensuring repeat business. That is, that they'll come back. In other words, you should turn passing trade into regular customers. Now, watch what should happen when the customer asks for the same again. Excuse me, when you have a chance, please. Same again? Yeah, please. Pint and a gin and tonic with ice and lemon? No, uh, I'm gonna change this time. I'll have, I'll have a glass of lager. We have a good range of lagers, Budweiser, Harp, Hoffman, Steiger, or Furstenberg. Mm. What's Budweiser like? What's very popular, and it's a very smooth taste. Yeah? Okay, I'll try it. Excellent. Do you care for something to eat, gentlemen? Do you fancy something to eat? Yeah, please. What kind of sandwiches have you? Or do you do rolls? We do a good selection of both. As you can see from the menu, we do a range of hot foods. Beef is our special today. Have a look at that and I'll be back to you in a minute. What we've just presented is a very broad scene. Obviously, you're not supposed to follow this word for word, but the main points we're trying to get across are one, same again. The barman remember the order. Two, product knowledge. Now, no matter how large or small your product range, you should know it and advise your customers. And three, selling. Now, this is not something normally associated with the bar trade, but in today's competitive market, you must have a full service, drinks, and in this case, food, and offer it to your customers, especially non-regulars. Remember, the object is to turn passing trade into regular customers. Now, what about bar food in general? Remember our friend in part one? Hey. Hey, they want a sandwich. The range of food will, of course, vary from pub to pub. Some of you will be working in an establishment where the demand for food is far greater than in others, depending on area and other factors.
The main points are, one, no matter how small or elaborate your food range is, it must always be presented with a high standard of hygiene, care and attention to detail. Two, control. Separate your drink cells from your food cells. This will ensure correct percentage returns in each area. Cleanliness, often badly executed. Remember your man of the first part? Glasses must be clean before being placed on clean mats. Also, keep a rotation of washing dirty glasses as they're returned and put clean ones back in their proper place. And remember, bar staff's concern does not begin and end at the bar counter. Is the ashtray clean? No? What's the correct way to change it? Like this. That's an important detail on cleanliness, but there are many, many more. But you should work from a hygiene checklist. But in general terms, make sure your premises, bar and lounge, carpets, windows, in fact, all elements look clean and inviting. And finally, an important but often neglected area, the toilets. <laughs> Difficult situations are part and parcel of the daily routine of bar staff. And in an exercise such as this with time constraints, we can't possibly cover every situation. So we've just selected one or two of the more common incidents. Well, the first of these is, in fact, often the most difficult. It is, of course, underage drinking. Well, no one wants to turn away custom, and it's often nearly impossible to tell a person's exact age especially in a busy Saturday night situation. But still, the law is there, and no person under 18 years of age may be served alcohol. So what do you do? Well, firstly, be pleasant and diplomatic. Can I have a vodka and coke, please? How do we handle this one? Look, I'm sorry, but the law states that I cannot serve anyone under 18. But I won't. I'd be happy to serve you if you can show me proof of your age. There's a sign on our door which states our house policy. This has been found to be one of the more diplomatic ways of handling this sort of situation. Is there any danger of a drink here? I'll be with you in a minute, sir. I know you're waiting. He's acknowledged that I'm here and that I'm waiting for service. Now, it's unlikely that I, the customer, will be either rude or impatient once the barman has politely explained the situation to me. One too many. You're in fine form tonight. This one is easy to spot. Any barman would have spotted this and obviously not served. The real skill is in spotting the person who would appear to be all right, but who with one more drink could go over the top and be a real problem, not just for you, but for your customers as well. You should be aware from a person's appearance and approach whether he or she has had too much to drink. Your approach should be diplomatic but firm. Experience will help you identify whether a person is going to be a problem or not. If you're in any doubt, don't serve, but consult the manager instead. 
But in the meantime, with the help of Ronan, our barman, here are some suitable responses. Large whiskey, please. I'm very sorry. I can't serve you. I'm not allowed to serve you. Easy enough. But what if he doesn't go? Are you accusing me of being drunk? Steady. Careful here. I'm very sorry. I'm not allowed to serve you. Notice the vital point here. He neither engaged him in conversation, acknowledged the accusation, nor wavered in any way. He simply stated clearly, I'm not serving you. The attractions of short-term profits gained from dubious suppliers is a very stupid practice. Apart from customer dissatisfaction leading to a loss of sales, you could end up on the wrong side of the law and without your license. Only stock and sell reputable products. Don't risk damaging your relationships with your customers, regular or otherwise, and only sell good quality products. Make sure all exit signs are clearly visible and properly lit, and that all exits are unlocked and unobstructed. Remember, it's an offence for exits to be locked or blocked. If you have a function room, you should announce safety procedure and point out all exits. Make your customers feel secure and safe. All bar staff must be aware of the safety procedures of the premises. Remember, standards of bar service are rising all the time. Customer demands are more sophisticated these days. Customers nowadays know what they want, and if you can't give it to them, they'll know somewhere else that can. In addition to what we've just shown you, there are other training services available. CERT provide a full range of training services and follow-up advice on ways of improving standards of service for proprietors and all staff. The College of Marketing and Design also provide a course for bar apprentices. Feel free to contact either of these at any time. All bar staff should be able to clean beer lines, which should be carried out weekly. This will ensure a quality product and customer satisfaction. If you have a problem with draft equipment or product, first check your fault-finding checklist. If the problem persists, however, please contact the Guinness Group Sales Office and they'll respond as quickly as possible. And finally, Guinness Group Sales provide advice on product dispensing and handling, and they can also advise you on technical equipment layout and maintenance. Excellent. 